GOP pollster, Chris Wilson. Good morning to you both. Angela, starting with you. Good morning. Uh, how do Democrats leverage these early Republican developments, these controversies that are brewing at the moment? Well, Richard, as you know, these things happen all the time. Right. And I think the bigger thing that we need to focus on is the Gallup poll that was released that said that politicians are the biggest problem facing uh, America at this point. Not even the economy, although it was a close second. I think the reality of that is that, you know, human frailties are fine, but the way in which you deal with them is abundantly important. I think folks are very tired of this, you know, either this or that type of political mm -hmm. atmosphere in Washington. It's a frustrating place to work. Um, it's it's a frustrating place to be on the Hill if you're elected and you can't get anything done. And it's a frustration, frustrating proposition also for the president who's had to move solely almost through executive um, action because he can't get anything from Capitol Hill, from the House or the Senate side. So I think a lot of this, we, we have a lot to see um, in this upcoming 114th Congress. And I think that um, it, we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, well, but I know the American people are tired of the stalemate. All right, so you're tired of the stalemate, and you're hopeful, it sounds like you're Angela, and you know what's needed. Chris, I think you might agree with that. Uh, how do Republicans, though, quiet these stories, if at all? As Angela's saying, this always happens. You'll move on. You'll get something done. Well, it does, move, it does happen, and you do move on. I think the way that Steve Scalise and Republicans need to deal with this is the same way Barack Obama dealt with his relationship with Jeremiah Wright. I mean, he immediately said that he was oh, not aware on. of the hateful rhetoric that was coming out of Wright's church and moved on from it, and I think the media granted him that and said, I think the same thing will happen with Scalise. He said he wasn't aware of it. He's apologized. And, and as long as there's nothing else that develops there, I think it becomes uh, uh, yesterday's news. Where we go from here, though, is, uh, is I think up to President Obama. Is Does he choose the path of Bill Clinton? Does he work with the Republican House and Senate and pass things like Bill Clinton did, say, for instance, with welfare reform? Or does he just take a hardcore no approach and veto anything that comes out of the Republican-led Congress? And, and if that's the case, then we're going to have two more years of gridlock, and it'll be unfortunate. And I think you'll continue to see the type of polling that Angela cited, where politicians are seen as the number one impediment to getting things done. And, and I'm hopeful that there will be a new spirit of conciliation as we move into the new year, and, and President Obama will take the opportunity to, to learn from, again, the lessons of Bill Clinton going, coming out of the 94 elections and, and work with this new Republican Congress and hopefully accomplish some things moving into 2016. And Angela, quickly responding to Chris and uh, his pointing to the president and him taking action moving forward. Uh, there's, of course, Congress that needs to be part of this, too. Sure, two things. I think that folks can learn from President Obama at this point. We did just see the Gallup poll numbers and the fact that his poll numbers now are higher than where Bill Clinton's were at this time. Secondly, just on the Scalise thing, Scalise was still taking donations from this same man that introduced him to this white supremacist group. So let's not Jeremiah write this, please. Oh, and Obama was still meeting with Jeremiah Wright going into uh, to the elections Let, but, in 2008. But you know it was so far more complex here. than that. Let's, Let's not talk more, about I that. I'm I think not going to do it. Are very Let's, clear. I want to move on. Parallels. I want to move They're on to what was talked They're about, and that are the Boeing approval ratings that the president is getting towards the end of the year here. And you were alluding to those, Angela. And I'll go to you, Chris, here on those numbers. Does that therefore mean that Congress? has to deal with a more popular president coming into 2015 here, and we'll see more things happening because they'll be willing to come to the table. Well, as low as they'd gotten, I don't think there's anywhere they could go but up. And, and I don't mean that pejoratively. I do think there is a situation as we move into a new year that people are willing to take a new look at people. And that certainly is true with the president of the United States. And so I'm actually, I, I mean that sincerely, that I'm hopeful that there are opportunities for the president and Congress to come together and fix some of the issues that uh, have not been dealt with over the last couple of years that, frankly, have been stopped in the Democratic Senate. I mean, the, the really biggest impediment have been between Harry Reid and President Obama. And now that you've got a new leadership coming in the Senate, hopefully there'll be a little bit more period. Uh, 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 sort of spirit of bipartisanship, conciliation, and to, can take some of the issues that have been just sitting there and languishing for the last couple of years, and the, the two can work together on it. Again, to give the example of Bill Clinton and welfare reform working together with Republican Congress, there are a lot of issues like that I think are pretty easy that, they, that Republicans and the president can address together. So, Angela, the president liking these numbers, not only from uh, Gallup, there's also the CNN ORC okay. poll that also showed that those numbers are rising. So as the president moves forward, is, does, does he feel like he's got the political capital here, that he has the electorate behind him, that he can make a move? But on the flip side, we're looking at, if you will, the beginning of the waning months of his administration, and he has to kind of balance both of those at the same time. 
I think that he's demonstrated, contrary to what other folks anticipated, that he's not planning um, to lose any ground whatsoever. He's continued to move um, his agenda forward. I think that there are two places where the Republicans and the president can work together. That's certainly on the trade agenda. And if they can move some appro appropriations measures, not those crisis continuing resolutions that we see often, there are two things that should be off the table if they want to show good faith, and that is Obamacare, and it is also the Keystone Pipeline. If we can move to, past those two issues onto something that's far more productive, I think you'll see a very good 114th Congress with the president. Chris, 15 seconds. Well, I don't think there's any question Obamacare has got to be on the table. People are really hurting in terms of what it's doing to them individually and the fact that they're having to pay more for health insurance. So if he tries to take Obamacare off the table, you're going to see his approval ratings absolutely plummet. And you're, as the American people are going to revolt against the amount of uh, what they're having to pay in higher fees. They're losing their doctors. People are hurting over that. And I think to try and uh, suggest that that should be off the table is a complete insensitivity to the American people and the plight that they're going through right now with health care. Chris Wilson. Insensitive. So I think that would be an unfortunate aspect. Chris Wilson, Angela Rye, you both have a great new year. Thanks to you. Too. Both for your presentation.